Once upon a time, there was a lady with reddish brown hair and greenish brown eyes and freckles on her arms who loved books and stories as truly as she loved anything in the world. She lived on a tree-lined, sun-streaked street in a cozy old house with a big front porch swing and a fragrant lilac tree in the backyard. The old house had many old wooden doors, doors that creaked and doors that squeaked, doors that wouldn't stay shut and doors that stuck when the lady tried to open them. One old door in particular hung very, very crookedly. One windy day, as the lady picked up a book that had blown off its shelf, the wind started to whoosh and whistle through the gap at the bottom of the crooked old wooden door. The lady felt a light breeze, and then she felt the old story stir. She began to remember the tales she had heard when she was just a little girl and the joy they had given her. She soon heard traces of more stories waiting to be told to those who would listen. So she decided to go out into the world and tell them. Hi, I'm Genevieve, an oral storyteller, and this is Crooked Door Storytelling. Mukashi Mukashi. I was that kid that loved to go to the library, that came home with the stack of dollar paperbacks from the school book sale bundled in my arms because I always loved to read and I always loved a good story, a story that taught me something about a place that I didn't know about, a story that took me somewhere where I'd never been before or maybe that didn't even exist. So I loved all the possibilities in that. So from the get-go, stories have appealed to me. And then you layer over the fact that then I started to love writing. And so I've been writing since I was a kid. And I turned that into a journalism career. And when I had a great experience learning about storytelling, all the different kinds from some really master storytellers, it was really inspirational. And I kind of felt like all the pieces fell into place and I was home. And this is what I needed to do. It just combines everything that I love between reading stories, writing stories, putting the information together, sharing it with people, maybe collecting other stories, finding more out about people along the way, and finding out more about the world and how it all works. And I get to do it all in my own voice, which I think is where storytelling does differ from acting, is that there isn't a fourth wall. I'm not any other character but myself. And that's one of the things that I really work to impart to the, both the kids and the adults that I work with, is that it doesn't have to be any kind of acting or pretending or keeping people at a distance. You want to make eye contact with the kids sitting on the floor or the elderly person sitting in the back of the room because when you make that, that kind of connection and you see them nod or you see a kid's mouth wide open, all of a sudden you think, wow, we're really all in this together. And that's a really powerful thing. And I, I like to think that the audience feels that when they're that engaged with the story, because I know I feel that. And it's been a while, I've been at it for a few years now, and what I really like about it is I think it's really a transformative thing. As a parent, I have learned here in Genevieve to how to read the stories to kids, how to make it lively. That's what I learned from her and for kids. Yes, I would say with my daughter, my experience, she started loving the story. She's developing, she's developing her imagination power, and that's what I love about it. Actually, this is very important because uh, this not only is this a story, this also, uh, you know, pulls kids' uh, attention and then plus. Uh, you know, make them listen carefully and then go deep into the story and then create all the imagination and everything. So storytelling is very important. I'm doing a lot of research and looking up my various myths or legends or folk tales. And once I do that, I commit a story to memory and I can put my own spin on it and I actually deliver it orally. Lastly, he went to the cat and he said, Mr. Cat, do you hop? And all the cat did with Daddy was he stretched like cats do. And he stretched more like cats do. And so Freddie didn't know what he would finally do. Until as he walked along, he saw a bunny with two ears behind his head and a big bushy tail. And then Freddie went up to that bunny and said, Do you hop?
I get to have this experience of bringing something to different audiences that they might not have heard before, from corners of the world that they might not know about. I'm investing in them, hoping that they'll listen and be a part of that experience with me. He went to the top of the highest, highest mountain, and he went to the shores of the deepest, deepest ocean, and he searched, and he searched, and he searched for so long for that perfect, perfect princess. But he didn't find her. And so he came back home. And that usually happy prince was kind of pouty. He was kind of in a bad mood, it made him really crabby. He didn't want to play with his friends. No, I don't want to go out. And he didn't want to eat anything. No, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat anything at all. And he spent a lot of time moping around the castle. Everybody has a story to tell. And what I really like to try to do is both work with kids and adults in school settings, workplaces, to kind of help empower them and realize that we never stop being storytellers. Our whole lives are just made up of stories. And it's really important that you feel that you have the ability to tell your stories and that your stories are as valid as the next person or the famous person who's made the newspapers or the television and you have something to share. In the, the storytelling experience, people listen, and, and I think that's a really valuable skill, too, that people need to have, especially in this day and age, when our attention spans are so short and we're so easily distracted, to really hone your listening abilities and really get something out of what you've heard is just as important as being able to tell a story. This is a Kamishi by a tale called The Three Paper Charms from Japan. Long ago, high up in a mountain village, there lived a young boy who spent all of his days studying with a very old and very wise monk. Now the boy also liked to take walks through the forest and look at the trees, collect berries, and usually he never came across anybody on his walks. But one afternoon, as he was walking along the mountain road, there was an old lady in his path. And she started and she looked at him and she said, Oh, how have you been? It's been such a long time. You've gotten so big. You're so grown up. I know your mother and I know your father and I know all your relatives. Now the little boy was very confused and he wasn't sure who this lady was, but she seemed so convinced that she knew him that when she invited him to her home in the mountains for dinner that night, he accepted. I draw a lot on different traditional tales from cultures really all over the world, just because that's personally really interesting to me. So both folk tales and fairy tales. And when I'm researching stories, I try to find multiple versions of those stories so I can craft and put something in my own words as well. So I'm not trying to lift something out of a tradition or do something verbatim that someone else has done before. And that's the cool thing about storytelling is even through history, there's so many different influences and so many different voices in the telling of different versions of stories. I'm really respectful of the fact of the whole folklorist and traditional storytelling, especially that was made popular in the 60s. There are a lot of people working as storytellers today who are inspirational and phenomenal and have changed parts of the world because of their stories and they continue to do that. But on the other hand, I think it'll be interesting to see where storytelling heads as we go down into this digital age further because I think there's a lot of potential there. And so what I feel like I'm straddling and trying to marry two different fields of, of both engaging people in a really traditional art form that's its own art form, as well as um, seeing what potentials we can explore in a different age where people listen differently and pay attention differently and um, tell stories kind of differently as well. Now, long, long ago, in a very small village, lived a very hardworking woodcutter. He rose up when the sun came up and went out to the forest and chopped trees down all day until it turned into nighttime. He was always worried about having enough money for his family and for his children. So one day, as he was finally leaving after a day of long work, he was walking out of the forest and he spied a huge, marvelous tree to cut down. And he thought, that's a perfect tree. I should cut that down because that'll fetch a pretty penny in the marketplace. 
And so he chopped and he chopped and he chopped at that tree. And just as he was ready to strike the final blow, he was so tired and sweaty and dirty that his ax flew right out of his hand and landed in a nearby pond. And he watched it as it fell in and go down, 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 down. And he thought, oh no, what will I do now? I work with kids of all different ages and tell stories on some levels for entertainment, on some levels to really instruct them in how to be storytellers, to, as I say, give them a voice. I mean, what I try to do is engage kids on that level, but also help them further what they're learning about through a story. Well, I try to actually get kids themselves to start telling stories and learn what it takes to tell a good story. It takes a voice, it takes tone, it takes expression. You have to understand language and you have to understand the flow of a story. So I think, again, with kids, it's more both helping educate them about a certain area that they may be learning about. On some other levels, it's great to try to teach and pass on storytelling skills to another generation. Again, very kind of basic skills, but things they might not be getting just to stand up in front of a room of people and be yourself and use your voice and understand the power in that. I think Genevieve's attitude and you know her personality really is, is something special. And I think that's really grabs the kids' attention right from the start and then her passion about storytelling, I just think she is just a great person. And her passion made me passionate, and now I, like, I'm in love with Kamishi by Theater. Like, I just didn't know that existed. It was like, wow, this is super fascinating. And it's just great that she will, she'll make her own Kamishi by cards um, to, to change the story. And she makes them with the kids and, you know, then has her own stories when she teaches the next class to teach them. And it's like passing new stories on to, to children as well as traditional folk tales. And I just really think that's important because she's connecting these students whether they know it or not. One special day sitting at their house, the otters decided to have a birthday party. Let's invite all of our friends to our house. We can have cake and candy and play. And then what I do is also in working with adults, I try to make them hearken back to being a person who's open to stories and maybe the fantastic or maybe the impossible. And so a workplace, I think there's a lot of room for storytelling to envision what kind of um, product or performance do you want to have at your work. Let's work on what the story is here and let's go with that because it's going to grab people a lot more powerfully than just coming up with a new chart or just telling people how things are going to be. I wasn't sure at first when she said, you know, you can use storytelling to, to do so many different things in, in work life and stuff like that. I, at first, I wasn't sure how we could do this. And then her whole thing was, don't think about it in like a, a normal fiction type of storytelling. You, you want to tell the story as though it's based on your experience. You're the main character, and you know, and the plot is whatever you're trying to convey in the story about uh, what's going to happen and stuff like that. And the way I did my presentation, it was really about experience. It was telling a story about experience and telling the story about how the experience could be stronger if we, we work together and change the way we do things and how we can have a, a richer story to tell, you know, to the organization as a whole if we work together. It made it very comforting for me to speak in front of like 50 people because I just was like telling my own story. It wasn't like this rigid presentation that, you know, I had to like follow the slides because I had a lot of uh, charts and things too. But the way I told the story around the charts made the presentation go very smoothly. And I felt like people really, for the first time, were engaged in what I had to say. Using a team building, Format, I think that helps a lot because we all have stories to tell and we all think that we're unique. You know, when people were sharing their little experiences, what happened was they, they, they allowed it to open up for a dialogue with everyone else in the room. And everyone in the room started chiming in and going, you know, I had this same sort of experience and then it took it off to something else, you know, just sort of like a springboard. And that's what I liked about it because it just sort of, sort of took people out of their normal sort of rigid work life and everybody was able to look at at something as simple as customer service and have a real good conversation around it 
I can show, based on the stories that they shared, what we've done differently to improve our team. What I do find is if I'm telling a story that's engaging the listener, I get moments of silence, and I get them looking and listening and watching. And that's a really good feeling, because it's given everybody in that audience permission or a chance to slow down and just kind of engage and enjoy just this very simple experience in what is now today a very complicated world. So what I try to do is, is I, I get to do what I like to do, but I also try to empower people and bring people together um, in the guise of stories. The end.